Hello everyone, welcome to another unboxing. This Vax commercial tub style vacuum cleaner was chosen from my Amazon wish list by Mark Leslie. So thanks again to Mark for buying me this. And it's thanks to Mark that I unbox it now and I'll be doing a demo very soon. So let's have a look at it. I'm intrigued, I've shown you this briefly. If you're a regular viewer, you'll have seen this in one of my advent videos last year. And I was intrigued by what it says on the box BMM technology is. So I'm wondering whether the instruction manual will give me any clues as to what BMM stands for. Right, well here we have the box Vax, we're here if you need us it says and we've got the box contents all laid out and at the top we have got of course the energy label so let's read that out so it's an A rating for energy use I'll tell you the wattage as soon as I find out gets an A rating for dust emissions so if you're sensitive to dust or have allergies this should um, do a good job at holding all that dust in. Gets a C rating for carpet cleaning, dust pickup from carpet, which is relatively good for a cylinder suction only cleaner. Gets a B rating for hard floor, and it's 73 decibels, which isn't too noisy. And it uses 26.6 kilowatt hours per annum on average. Uh, this is a Vax commercial cleaner, so we've got a registration card to send back to Vax. And here's the user guide, VCC08A. So it's uh, very like all the Vax user guides you get nowadays. Lots of pictures, but with some text as well. Still don't know, I still haven't found out what the old uh, BCC means but anyway it's probably something very straightforward don't think I'm going to find out looks like it's an 800 watt motor according to this but I'll check the actual rating plate on the machine so let's take the hose out it's a long hose by the looks of it and it seems uh, quite a good quality got a nice metal tube, metal handle, you've got suction control as well, that's a bit stiff there, that's in the closed maximum suction position. I'm assuming, similar to a Henry type, yes, you can take this off and use this end just to quickly whip around anywhere. Not sure if any of the tools fit directly to here without the, an adapter, we'll soon find out though. It seems very long, this hose, certainly I'd say it's at least a two metre length hose. And this is the end. Again, it's a screw fitting, similar to the pneumatic style cleaners. If you're interested in buying this machine, um, as I said, this was purchased from my Amazon wish list. So Amazon stock it. Um, and you can expect to pay at the time of making this video between 70 and 100 pounds, that sort of price point, depending on the time you buy it, because the price fluctuates a lot on Amazon. Right, let's just open the two-piece tube. It would have been nice to see a telescopic tube, but pneumatic don't supply a standard a telescopic tube either. But this is this is a domestic, well, it's a domestic sort of size but it is really a commercial cleaner but you can use it in a domestic environment so you've got two metal tubes one of them has got your little parking slot so you can actually park the tube fully assembled on the machine but it's also got storage just here for two of the smaller cleaning tools which should be in the box so there's your two lightweight but metal tubes Here's the main floor nozzle by the looks. Can't get it out because the vacuum's stopping me. There we go. Wrapped up in bubble wrap for protection. 
This is a reasonably good nozzle, this. I've I've had this nozzle and another at a domestic fax cleaner. It's not got a metal plate though. I would have liked to have seen a metal base plate on a commercial cleaner. But there you go, that's his standard carpet and floor nozzle. Um, quite a wide opening. You've got your red litter picker and you've also got a brush that comes down at the front and a squeegee at the back for cleaning your hard floors. Two wheels and they've got a bit of a, a rubber tyre on them, which is nice. So that's your main carpet and floor head. There should be some smaller tools in here. I can't see them, but I assume they'll be stored inside the vacuum. So here's the vacuum in traditional Vax Orange. It's certainly, if you, if you want a, a guide for size, I would say it is bigger. It's certainly wider than a Henry type cleaner. Let's have a look underneath. So you've got two wheels, two swivel caster wheels at the front, two fixed wheels at the back. Here's the rating sticker. Hold it up so you can see. If you, I'll try and get it. Try and get it central. Can you see that? There we go. Whoop! Left a bit. Let's see what it says. So it's it's made in PRC as I suspected, and it is 800 watts, and it's 4.7 kilograms in weight. I don't know if that's just this part or the machine assembled. But it is, it's not ultra light, but it's relatively lightweight. But it uh, should follow you fairly easily with the large wheels and the casters. There's a Vax um, branding just on the base there. You've got a little sort of a, a skirt all round that acts as a little bit of a bumper. And on the side here, we've got some just information that was on the box, including this. BMM technology. If I haven't told you what that means in this video, do you know what this means? BMM technology? If you do, please comment underneath. Here's the back of the cleaner. So you've got your foot operated on off switch in orange and you've got the hush mode button in a light grey. And this is the grill that covers the exhaust. There's no cable attached. I'm assuming the cable and the small tools are inside here. That's probably why it feels a bit heavier than it would. And it plugs in, and I assume it'll be an orange cable, it'll plug into there. And on the back is your exhaust filter, which must be, I would say, a HEPA type, because it gets an A rating. Let's pull it out and have a look. Squeeze those tabs, there we go. Whoops. Yeah, it seems quite a decent exhaust filter. Not sure if it's washable because you've got the pleated HEPA and then there's also another type of material on the other side. So that fits in. It's a little bit tight actually. But I suppose if it's tight it's giving a good seal. It clicks in nicely and then we can put the grey grill over the top like that. Let's have a look inside. Obviously, this is where you screw the hose on, and obviously, you've got your carry handle. This at the back that's the parking slot, but also, you've got a hook that just to hook the cable over. I assume that's for. So, let's take off the lid. So, in the lid, we've got a filter right at the top. And that'll be, I'm not sure if it'll be washable, but certainly be replaceable. It's got the actual bag fitted. Before we look at the bag, let's take out the small tools. So you've got your crevice tool for down the sides of your chairs and behind radiators and all your other nooks and crannies. Then you've got a dusting tool for shelving helmets etc. It's quite a nice 
shaped tool that and it will adjust, yes it adjusts medium soft brushes so not too bad, you could do your Venetian blinds I suppose with that nozzle as well that seems to be the only two small nozzles you get, let me check that that's correct with the contents, yes I believe this is a 32mm diameter tool kit so you should be able to fit pneumatic tools to this or any other 32mm tools if you've got those lying about. Here's the heavy duty orange cable. Orange because it's easier to see in a commercial environment so people aren't tripping over it. If it was black it would, be, uh, it would blend into the carpet unless you've got a white carpet. So having orange means it's easier to see. So the bag seems, seems to just push on, seems to be quite a large bag, very large in fact, and it pushes on in a similar way to a pneumatic type bag, and I'm assuming it will seal if you pull it, there's some arrows pointing up, we've got a little bit of a, a membrane to keep the air tight, to keep the, the dust in shall I say. So it's a large bag and it's a, a fleecy type material. I expect they're easy to get hold of. I expect Amazon will sell those if they sold the machine. And you've got the motor in the base, so it should have a low centre of gravity, so it shouldn't topple over. There's, this is the pre-motor sponge filter. I'm sure you'll be able to rin rinse that under the tap, squeeze it out, leave it to dry before putting it back. So that's the inside. Let's pop the pop the bag back just by pushing it right onto the bag support tube. That's it. Make sure it's evenly positioned in there, and we want it so it's not going to get caught when we put the lid on. And you can see the way that the suction comes. I think this should maintain suction for quite a long time. The suction comes from the back where the black filter is, from the motor. And then you can see this is where the air path is. So this piece here goes over where the black filter is. And then you've got this filter on the top. So really, it should maintain a quite, quite a good airflow as the bag fills with this sort of design. Reminds me of the SIBO D machines, the professional D and the domestic D machines, they have a big round filter that's located on the top of the bag and that's designed to maintain the suction as the bag fills. Right, so it goes on that way and then you just, that's it, move the clips down. This at the front is a tiny hole there, that's your suction relief valve, so if you get a blockage or you try and use the machine when the bag's too full to prevent the motor from overheating to keep air flowing through the machine that little valve will open up and you'll hear a change, you'll hear the air rushing in there and you'll know that you need to check for a blockage or to fit an empty bag. Yes, that seems robust. Let's attach the cable and I'll switch it on. We'll give it a little bit of a go. As I said, a full demo will follow. But this is an alternative to, you know, for a commercial, be suitable for use in an office, in a shop. But, you know, because it's, it's a relatively inexpensive vacuum, you could use it in your home. You could use it in places where you wouldn't use your regular vacuum, for example. Keep it in your garage, use it to clean up after your woodworking projects, and then use it in your car. Because it's got a nice long hose, so it should reach quite far around your car. So you plug the end into here and I believe you loop and I think you actually push it, push the, the cable up actually. Let's just have a quick look to stop the cable from coming away. That's like you push it up through this loop, through this bit here Let's just get that in. It's a bit tight. Once you've done this though, you won't have to do it again. 
and then that will go over that hook and then you pull it down that's it there we go so now the cable is secured to the machine and yes that hook once you've used the machine you'd coil up the cable like that and it would just hang over so not as good as having the Henry type cable rewind mechanism but I suppose there's less to go wrong and it's very easy to change this cable if it becomes damaged just buy a new cable and plug it in so you know that's good for a commercial vacuum let's screw the hose on nice fit right let's plug it in and uh, we'll see how noisy it is the cord length is actually 12 and a half meters, so that's very long. So if you do use this in your house, you'll probably find you only have to plug it in once downstairs and you should be able to clean the whole of your downstairs unless you live in a very big house. The capacity of the dust bags are nine liters. The black pre-motor filter is washable. The top filter in the bin, you can brush that using the dusting brush or if you've got to hand another vacuum cleaner to keep that clean but the exhaust HEPA filter isn't washable Vax recommend you change that think about every six months or according to how often the machines used if this is going to be used commercially it will probably be used every day for quite some time but if you're using it domestically especially if it's your second cleaner then you won't have to replace the filter quite so often so let's switch her on I'm not sure which is the default mode, if it goes straight into hush or it's full power, we'll soon find out. So it seemed when I switched it on the default setting was full power, it's, it's relatively quiet. I press the hush button. Now, I'm not sure now whether if I switch it on again, it will start in the hush mode. Let's find out. It seems to reset itself. So every time, if you want to use hush, you need to press that every time you switch the machine on. But I expect in a commercial environment, the cleaners will just switch it on and won't even bother with hush. It does make a slight difference to the noise level, but not a huge difference. But yes, it's, uh, it's, it's relatively quiet. It's very long hose. When I do a demo, I'll see how far this will reach up a standard flight of stairs. But it's certainly, even in a domestic house, it won't reach right to the top, but I think it'll reach quite a way. Let's assemble the tubes. You've got nice... You're not just meant, you've got a nice little plastic part at each end, so it feels like it's a nice tight seal. It does feel, you know, it's rugged. It's great value for money. You know, I've seen these, you know, if you can pick it up for under £70, it seems, you know, initially, first reaction, that uh, it's, it's good value for what you get. So I've put the two small tools on the little holder and pop the carpet and floor nozzle on the end. It's certainly a better carpet and floor nozzle. I've tested Vax's famous orange 3-in-1 tub cleaner and I wasn't impressed with that with the nozzle it came with at the time but I think that might come with a better nozzle now. But this certainly I think is a lot better than the older nozzles that were supplied. Right, we'll just give it a quick go and see how easy it is to push on this carpet. It certainly grips the carpet. It is a little bit hard to push on this particular carpet on its maximum setting. Of course I can, if I want to reduce the suction to make it a bit easier to push, I can either use the suction control here by opening the vent on the handle, or of course I can use hush mode, which will of course make it quieter, but it also reduces the suction. It's 
easier to push on hush mode, but obviously with reduced suction, we might get reduced pickup. That's normally the case. But anyway, I think it's uh, it's pretty robust. But as I say, it is it's a little bit bulky. It's not that tall. It's stable. There's no chance, I don't think, really, of that toppling over because of the low centre of gravity. Negative points. There's no onboard cable rewind. There's just that hook. Um, but first impressions, it seems to be good value for what it offers. And as you see, that's the machine in its parked position. Like that. So you can sort of coil the hose around a bit to make that a bit more compact. But for storage, it is a little bit bulky. In a commercial environment, of course, it doesn't matter. It should have a big area to keep all the cleaning equipment. In a domestic environment, it is a bit big to store. To make it smaller, of course, you can take the hose off, store those separately. So bear that in mind. But yeah, first impressions seems pretty good. Thank mm -hmm. you.